Hello, tonight is Halloween and we're having this event called In Seeing the Unseen in the university. So we are going to have lectures. There is an inflatable planetarium. We are going to be there in the observatory and, and it's going to be super cool. But tonight I'm going to come back to my audience and become Montebe. Yo siento pánico cuando voy por las calles de Arcorcón. Es algo mágico, ha desaparecido el mogollón. Es que no veo a nadie, solo a mi abandonado corazón. Es que no veo a nadie, solamente a los maderos de Arcorcón que me hacen gritar. And here we are in the spookiest part of the campus where the telescope is. Let's get in. So we, what we are expecting to see today? No. Um, Is that infrared? We're expecting to see, we're expecting to see the Plough, uh, Cygnus, um, Pegasus, hopefully Andromeda, which is where I'm doing my research, which is exciting. Um, but it's a bit cloudy and we've got one star at the moment. <laughs> Here's where where all the magic happens in the telescope. So as soon as we point it, then we can start taking images with the software. So the software also controls the camera, controls the filter wheel, controls uh, this is an alpha axis camera to stay very always on the same place. So we take we take pictures with this, and this is the camera. So it's a very expensive camera uh, that works basically. It's kind of if you have like a grid with small wells and then they, they get photons, they get filled in and at the end that's what we get on the screen, right? Specific to have images of very specific uh, chemical elements. For instance, in Italy you will have uh, high nice energy and all that kind of thing. So that's very nice to be able to take very precise images of this. Okay? So these two things are then put on the mount and the mount is a huge, very massive thing with that block of concrete and the pole that goes down in the, in the ground. And this is very massive. It has two objectives. The first one is to keep track, well, to be able to point at very specific places in the sky and to keep track of the rotation of the Earth because we want to stay on the same target when we observe something. And also, this whole thing is very massive so that we avoid having the, the whole um, telescope shaking when we... Yes, so this is uh, an Italian astronaut called Carlo Nespoli. Um, he, this was, uh, this is captured about two months ago uh, from this very antenna from my home, which is just up by Stoke Park. Um, and you don't need a lot to pick it up. You just need that antenna, made for about thirty quid, um, and it's uh, actually a TV tuner uh, dongle, which you can get for about eight euros. Get your laptop and away you go. The only thing you need to remember is this frequency here, uh, 145.8, in the same way that you remember Radio 1 or whatever. <laughs> we just have to keep our eye out, and what it does is it beeps. So every five seconds it actually it actually beeps at you. And what we do is do is you have to wait and listen. Just the boring part. <laughs> 
coming, yeah, that way. It's coming over that way and then it's going over north, over in that direction. So, we just have to wait for it. This is a satellite. This is voice from one satellite to another. Also a series of stands with different experiments and things that people can achieve. The whole thing expands. The whole star here, especially the outer part, is very fluffy. It's very, very large object. No, so this is quite a rigid one and it's actually a bit sicker than we do to the patient. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it's quite a mouthful. That is used currently for i4 mobile phones and it can be placed with nanomaterials which are flexible, which are strong, and super productive and transparent. This is what we did. Um, we made a um, material which is made. So, this is a silver mono wire. Here is just a few natural rocks that are radioactive, and then we put them on the detector here and we get the, uh, the results out. So, we can see some beta decay, and then every so often uh, alpha decay there. And there's large blobs. So, alpha are uh, helium, a helium nucleus, yeah. and beta are electrons. Effectively, yeah. Okay, and how do you know the difference there because of the intensity on the... Yes, yeah, so it's, it's down to how much energy has been deposited. Okay. So the uh, alpha uh, deposits a larger amount of energy, so it gets a broad spread of energy. So okay, thank you very much. Uh, have you never heard of the Here's Lord will tell you that that's not possible. Stars are way out here, should we go much slower? Yeah. Yeah. The material itself that you're putting into the container to try to detect the dark matter is radioactive. So whenever you take, you know, if you take any, any atom that you like, let's say xenon. Yeah, you think yes. about that, yeah. So with the gravitational waves, we're looking for really small changes to the actual length of space itself. And so for that we need a really sensitive way to measure small changes in distance. And we're sending the light from the laser to this computer and we're sending half of it straight on and half out along this branch. It's then reflecting off the mirrors at the two ends and coming back and it's recombining and being sent to our detectors. And so where the lights travelled along these two different paths, depending on what the distances are, when it comes back together, we can either have the two waves in phase with each other, so the peaks and troughs are arriving at the same time, and so they'll add up to a big open signal. Or we can end up with the peaks and troughs arriving at opposite times, like this, and so they'll cancel each other out, and we get no signal at the detector. And so our signal on the detector is busy oscillating between a maximum and minimum as we change this target in the waves it constructively and then destructively. I don't need to do that.
<laughs> God. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.